Hi, this is Madeline from Sonic Bloom, and this is the second episode of a four part mini series in which we'll explore how we can generate music with the media facts in Ableton Live. Today, we're going to check out different ways of generating melodies. In the first episode last week, we looked at different ways of generating bass lines. If you haven't watched it yet, I'd recommend to watch it first before coming back to this video. We're going to use what we've created for bass lines for melodies as a starting point, since of course bass lines are just specific melodies in the lower frequency range in the end. To use what we already have, we can just make a few tweaks to make it work well for simple melodies instead of bass lines. Okay, so the only thing I've swapped out right now from the baseline generation live set is that I've switched out the Racine Drift preset for the bass with an Ari Mbira preset of mine. If you're interested in the sound, I'll link the pack below so we can just listen. And while it sounds quite nice with this one, with other presets, the C2 that we've got set in the MIDI clip might be a bit low, but you've got several clips here with C2 in there. So instead of setting everything to C3, I'm actually going to take a shortcut and I'm going to grab the pitch plus 12 and drop it in here. And now we've got an octave higher. And then you know, as you can hear, the presets like this or the MIDI settings work fine. But we could also say like, okay, let's try different rates in the arpeggiator. Maybe set the repeat not to an infinite, but to just one. also try a beat re-trigger okay but this is still fairly simple not that much different from the bass lines that we've generated and the media facts that we used for that but we can go deeper and this is what I want to show you you can actually generate quite complex melodies by combining the MIDI effects. So what, before I do this though, I would just want to show you that, for example, if you just drag the random preset behind the chord, this can also change the MIDI generation already. And so this is something I'd recommend you play around with as well, how this can affect the output you're getting. I'm going to put it back here and now one thing we could also try is I'm going to set this here to random and then map this to the repeats and then set this maybe to 16th notes again and I don't want to have it go to the, the maximum amount of repeats except for like the in infinite that is at the bottom so I'm just going to set it to 25% here. So you can have randomized pauses in there as well. You could also say, okay, start at 10, so we don't have infinite. I'm actually going to take this out again for the next thing I want to show you and I'm going to select all the devices here in the device chain and then do command G, control G if you're on Windows because I want to show you how you can go more complex and what we've done right now is just put all the devices in a MIDI effect rack. So I'm going to tweak a couple of things, say like I'm going to set the rate of the arpeggiator to quarter notes because you don't want to generate too many things at once for the next step. I take the steps down to zero in this one as well. And then I can just do a command D 
or control D to simply duplicate this chain. And then we can just go, okay, let's get rid of a couple of devices. Maybe set the arpeggiator to half notes and maybe to one repeat. Set the repeats here to one as well. And then let's have a listen what output we're getting. I could also say we're going to get rid of the pitch here. But this still is not that different. We could also say we're setting the style to random or random other. So it's not playing the lowest note and upwards. But even that is not very complex and what we can utilize, for example, to have more complex rhythms. So let's say I'm taking this up to 16th notes again. So right now we're having basically a pause at the end. But what if we want to use this to kind of have one chain play at the beginning and the other one at the end? And we can achieve this by using note length. I'm going to drop this here at the beginning. And note length in general, if you're using it with trigger note on, is determining the length of the note, hence the name. But if you set it to note off, you can actually use it to delay the MIDI notes that are in, coming in. So I'm going to set this to sync as well. And then let's try this with maybe an a quarter note. And I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to set the pitch to 24 maybe here. And then we could set the rate maybe even to 30 second notes. And we're going to set this to an eighth note here for the MIDI note delay. And if we wanted to delay this further, we could just add another note length in here in front of it. Because right now we've got a, a whole note or semi breve that plays. And then what we could achieve this way is we keep in the note on and setting the note length that is coming in to eighth note. So let's listen to the individual chains. And I would like to delay this here as well. Nope. And we're going to use the time again as well. And let's say we're delaying it by 16th note. Okay, so let's tweak this a little bit. 
I'm going to set this to steps 1. So I'll go an up, octave up. Then we could say we don't want to go down. So we just give it the option of going up. Maybe choices of all notes within an octave up. Let's listen to this one. I kind of like this. Maybe change this. Okay, well, there's endless possibilities to tweak this. We could also use the expression control here to change parameters like um, the note length in the note off and then so on and so forth. But let's have a listen to the other MIDI clips. So this is quite chaotic, but this was supposed to be for a bass line. So a simple way to make this less chaotic is by clicking on times two. That's nicer, I think. Let's try the other ones. So if you combine these two like MIDI clips where the note length are different and the different chains with the note length, you can get quite complex melodies out of this. And then one thing I'd like to show as well is right now we've got the major scale preset in all the, in all the chains, but we only really need it once. What we can do here is I just drag this here, select the media fact rack as well as the scale preset and whoop it again. And then of course, we don't need the other scale presets anymore. So I can just get rid of this one and get rid of this one. So if you want to change anything in there, we only have to change it once and not in all three chains. Well, that's it for today. Next week, we're going to look at how to generate chords and not just simple chords, but more complex ones as well. And I'm going to show more new tricks as well. Let me know if you have any comments or questions below. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.